Reason that just released the Jade Bot trailer. This is sort of the Jade Tech Mastery that we are supposed to be getting a preview in Guild Chat on Friday. And I believe that is in, in three days from now. So this Friday, we'll get the full preview of what it does and the features. But they've released the trailer just to showcase some of what it will do. Uh, and so, yeah, we're going to react to this. Uh, we'll watch it the first time and then we'll go back and analyze what we can find. So there we go. Junlai Jade is always refining the products that make Cantha a more accessible, advanced nation. With creative and thoughtful design, the same technology used in Jade Max can almost fit in the palm of your hand. Awesome. Say hello to your new adventuring companion. We all have different needs, so you can customize your Jade Bot with a module. Let them speed up your skiff, energize your mount, oh, okay. recycle items, scavenge for you, and more. We've seen this. Equip it with a robust power core and your bot can even enhance your vitality. Your Jade Bot will always be there to give you a boost, save you time, and pick you up when you're down. It's great company when you just want to take in the view. Make a little room in your heart for Jade Bots. They'll be available to unlock and customize soon. Okay, um, well, there's a few new things it's, it actually does. Yeah, um, I actually want to... Okay, let's, let's rewatch it from the start. And nitpick again. Junlai Jade is always refining the products that make Cantha a more accessible, advanced nation. It's funny when they say more accessible and advanced nation. To me, I think this is them kind of... Uh, this mastery really feels like it's for players who aren't here from Path of Fire and Heart of Thorns. And this is supposed to be helping them play more catch-up. The only issue I find is that this makes it for the already veteran players more of like... It, it doesn't really give much of a challenge in the open world um, because this bot kind of does a lot of things. And I, I don't like hand holding uh, like this. This bot really feels like it's hand, it's holding your hand, taking you through this game. And I understand for new players, they need some sort of way to catch up. And if they don't want to, you know, dive into the game and have to play two expansions before they even get to the third one. For the, ex you know, experienced players who've already been playing this for some time, it feels too hand holding. With creative and thoughtful design, the same technology used in Jade Max can almost fit in the palm of your hand. That does not look like it almost fits at the palm of your hand. That is bigger than your hand. If I carried that, I would drop poof, to the floor. Don't tell me it fits the palm of my hand. Say hello to your new adventuring companion. We all have different needs. So you okay, so I could push skiffs. Um, I actually wonder, like, is this only if you're alone in the skiff or... Can you activate it when you're with people? Because the skiff can take up to four four people, right? Four or five people, I believe. Uh, a full party. Um, so I wonder, like, is it only spammed by the driver? Or can everybody use their Jade Bot? Because that would be very broken. Like, am I, imagine the races, how they're going to be. It's going to be like Formula One on water. You can customize your Jade Bot with a module. Let them speed up your skiff. Energize your mount. Energize your mount. Energize your mount. Like, how energize your mount, though? Um, because if you mount up... Let me just... Just go to, uh, like, right or soon. Um, energize your mount is interesting because, like, you can already sort... Like, does that mean, like, um... Uh, so, like, you know, your mount stamina bar. Uh, so, to me, that's what I feel like energize your mount means, right? Just refill your stamina bar again. Uh, and you can already do that with this skill right here. Uh, for example, you can, uh, you know, use your stamina bar here once, twice. I'm on the mount, you know, in case you don't see it. And then, and then you could click your bond of vigor, which literally just recharges yourself again. 
and again and then it's like a bit of a faster recharge um so does this mean you get like one more recharge with your mount interesting um okay recycle items Wait, what Let's see. let them speed up your skip yeah this i wonder if this is like with a full party or only one person and if it's a full party can that one person do it with the whole party or only one person can actually speed up the skiff like aka the driver um oh it says here in the subtitle recycle items energize your mount recycle items scavenge for you and more recycle items uh like salvage or do you feed it something and it gives you something else uh, recycle to me feels like um, it could either mean like it, it's gonna salvage things for you um, or it would be like it feeds you something uh, kind of random but based on whatever you're feeding it will give you an option of a couple of things that it, it could possibly RNG give you right uh, like a free like a copper fed 2.0 yeah yeah I, I don't know why we would even need this um, recycle items you already have a copper fed uh, that would, I'm assuming it would be like costless, right? Recycle, no, or there has to be some sort of cost to it. Maybe like some jade currency or something. Um, if, if it's cheaper, by the way, if it's cheaper than like having a copper fed, it's going to be kind of meme because like a copper fed is supposed to be the quality of life item from all the salvage kits because it's the one that you'd recommend to every player should have, right? If it's, if you don't even have gold to buy the other ones, that's the one that you should have at least, the copper fed at the minimum. And it's two copper to salvage or, or sorry, three copper to salvage an item. Uh, and I don't know what this will, will be, right? Because it's recycling an item for you, but what does it recycle? What does it use to recycle and consume? Um... It should eat graze and produce a boost for something. So like maybe junk items. Yeah, maybe recycles junk for you and gives you a better value for them. I, I'm not I'm not too fond about that. So the problem with that right now is junk items, uh, I don't think give you a whole lot of gold in general, right? But the fact that it's a lot of people that do them every day and like sell their junk to the vendors every day does produce a good amount of gold in the economy. Um, and... I'm not too sure about this. If it gives you something a bit more valuable, that would kind of put more inflation into the economy. There'd be more uh, money coming in. Um, I honestly think like if it's something like this, they need to bring something like repair armor should cost you money again. Because that would be very... Th this, you won't feel it now, but you would a couple months later, you would notice the, the gold value, uh, uh, you know, it will be affected. So... If they actually produce better items than the junk that you get from vendors that you sell, the money that you get from the vendors for selling the junk, if this produces something better, uh, I'll buy it. There should be a cost, I think. So recycle is definitely not going to be free, but it might be like it consumes a currency from the game. But I think they need to balance that. They need to be careful with this. Um, I would not give something that's way more valuable than the gold that you already get from the vendors from junk. Because then you need to introduce something else to take gold out of the economy, which would be repairs. So maybe just auto salvage. Yeah, maybe it's just something like an auto salvage. Um, interesting. And then scavenge for you. So you they could scavenge for you. What does that mean? Like they just scavenge for you. That just sounds like uh, they could loot for you, right? So like you don't have to auto loot or something. Scavenge just feels like auto loot. Or like, yeah, uh, or gather, or it could be like gather nodes. Yeah, but auto loot, uh, it could be like maybe it could find you something. Um, maybe it finds you like an extra piece of material or item that you would have not found without the mastery. So like uh, you would loot the enemy, but then because you could activate this to scavenge for you, maybe it could find something extra, you know, that you would not have known if you didn't have the Jade bot with you. Um, nodes... It's kind of tricky because um, nodes is, is actually tricky. Uh, right now with nodes, you can do this. Uh, so, for example, nodes right now uh, in the game. 
you would have like for example your ga your your gathering materials here right and you have these things called upgrades they're called glyphs right glyph of volatility glyph of speed and these glyphs that you put on your on your gathering materials are like a bit, bit of a bonus right so like if you have glyph of glyph of speed you can gather quicker right if you have uh, glyph of volatile magic you will get volatile magic when you're gathering um, so, like, if you, if it scavenges for, for you and it's also taken, if you interpret it as a way that, like, it's going to gather nodes for you, um, does it use your glyph or not? Because if it doesn't, then it's actually pointless. You might as well just use your gathering tools here with the upgrades that you have on them. Right now, the most profitable upgrade to put on your gathering tools is the vol vol volatile magic. So, um... If it can do that, then this is a very pointless thing for it to gather for you. Unless you can also put like a upgrade on the bot itself. Uh, but that just seems like kind of pointless when you already have the tools needed to begin with. Uh, but then the, the benefit is that the bot is account bound. So then you have the best of both worlds that it can be used on the other characters. I think the word recycling makes me think it's something to do with the great items, as in recycling has to do with giving a new purpose to trash. That would actually be good, as long as they find a way to counter that, because if it's something way more valuable than the gold that you get from a vendor right now, I really feel like there'll be a discharge in the economy. So I, I would definitely find a way to balance that, because you're now bringing more money into the game. And you need to find a counterpoint to not do that, uh, to offset that at least. Um, otherwise, you will see the inflation. Not now, but you will see it months later. So I, I would be careful of how they do this. Black Lion Expeditions. Um, I, I would honestly, it would not be a bad idea if the, glyph of vol uh, like if the glyphs are included on the bot because now it's account bound because the gathering tools are character bound. The only issue is now you've basically remove the purpose of the gathering tools because your bot could do it unless maybe there's a cooldown period maybe there's a recharge period who knows if, if they could do it that way then i guess that's somewhat okay but yeah i'm not i wouldn't be a fan of the un, 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 infinite gathering tools being taken out of the game here in terms of like use usefulness hope they uh make gathering tools like legendary stuff uh, it's a pain to put those in shade and time yeah i mean this could be that solution but then it would be something like they'd have to refund everyone who has gathering tools in the game. You know, it'd be similar to the legendary army situation. Yeah, cooldown like a teleport to friend. Yeah, I, I think a cooldown would be okay. I would I would be actually okay with a cooldown. I think that would offset all, all this that it's offering. Because it, it offers a lot. Like it can boost your skiff, recycle items, whatever we're interpreting it, right? It could be any of those, or maybe even something we haven't thought of scavenge for you which could be either scavenging items you would have not found from dead enemies unless you had the bot with you or it could mean gathering or it could be something entirely different as well from what Ain is suggesting right um and there's a couple more features we'll look into too equip it with a robust power core and your bot can even enhance your vitality Equip it with a robust power core and it can enhance your... Is that a waypoint? Equip it with a robust power core and your bot can even enhance your vitality. Oh, no. That's just an upgrade from... Okay. What do they mean by... So this means obviously you have to recharge it, right? But... Or if it's specifically talking about just for your vitality. What could vitality mean? Like a boon? Your health? Some some sort of boost. This one's not too. What do they mean by but this? I feel like we'll have to actually wait. I don't know if there's much to deduce from this one, um, but it seems like it does need to be recharged in some way. I I would prefer if it can be recharged. And hey, if the recharge costs money, that's good because now that offsets what we were just talking about with uh, uh, recycling. Maybe it commits trash items until it caps and then converts them to crafting or materials equivalent value. So then new gold only saves you step to vendor mats and then buy them from TP. That would not be a bad idea. As if, if it will cost you money to recharge the, the bot, that will offset that idea itself. So that's actually good. Uh, there's new articles that talk about the cost, by the way. Can you link the articles? We'll look at them after the rest of the video.
It's pretty cute. Just look at that face. Yeah, it looks cute until it goes haywire and becomes like an eye robot scenario where they're looking to take over all of humanity and kinding. Massively OP. Okay, we'll look at that. One article mentions that it'll have one power core that increases your vitality as you go further into the mastery. Two modules and you choose what features you want. Ooh, that would be good. Okay, let, let, let's continue. Let's continue. Your Jade bot will always be there to give you a boost. Save you. I don't know what reference it will be. So this is like also one of the things you could do in, in Kanta is like, you know, uh, kind of slide through these zip lines. Uh, maybe it boosts you while you're sliding through. I mean, look at that cute face. Oh, look, it's so cute, right? Until he gets angry and he gets red eyes. But yeah, for now, uh, it, it, it's cool. You time and pick you up when you're down. I don't like this. I don't like auto reviving yourself. I mean, that puts revive orbs like out of out of business. They they doing Yvonne Nash Blade the disservice here. Yvonne Nash, why do I even have these features in the Black Lion Trading Post if Kanta just gonna come in? The Jade Company is putting the Black Lion Trading Company out of business. Be there to give you a boost, save you time, and pick you up when you're down. I don't know what they mean by save you time, but we'll we'll see if that actually has any reference. Down. I'm gonna, not gonna lie, chat. I'm not a I I'm not a fan of this. I'm not a fan of a bot just being able to revive you, even if it's on a cooldown period or a once uh power up or even if it's like this is the only feature you you choose to do if you have to pick from features maybe it can do recycling salvaging uh scavenging um boosting your skiff maybe it can do all the features in one maybe you have to actually pick the features you wanted to do specifically and you can't change until whatever you're like it is like a, re a cooldown period or if it's just like you have to just pick one every now and then for the moment that you need it for but I'm not a fan of this. I, I feel like this is hand-holding in the worst possible way. I You don't need this. You already have a chance to revive yourself, and that's through the down state. Why do you need to revive yourself in the down state through help of a bot? I think either your friend revives you, or you kill the enemy to rally, or you just revive yourself with the number four skill. Down state ability, probably like a ranger one. Probably open world. Yeah, this is definitely open world. I don't think this is happening in PvP or or world versus world. I don't see that a lot of the features of the, a lot of the features of this bot. I don't think are going to be applied in those two game modes. I, they would just change fundamentally. They would change a lot in those game modes, and I don't think I could see them uh, messing that up. So they're not going to happen. Uh, thank you so much for the follows. I appreciate it. Attendance for at least. Mm. Anyway, uh, I feel like the bot will be abused and broke features. Yeah, uh, I hope it's not as well in the instance content, you know. Uh, right now, you could revive people in fractals. You can't revive people in in other game modes in PvE. Uh, I mean, open world aside, like in the instance one, only fractals works. Um, I don't think I would like to see this here. It's just... I. I think you need to learn to hold yourself, right? And make sure you don't die. But like, if you die and this is a feature there, I feel like it'll just kind of promote laziness where players can be like, oh, if I die, at least I have like one quick way to save myself, right? Even if it's a recharge or even it's a one-time use and then they have to recharge it up again. Um, it's just, it feels like a lazy approach to a game mode. I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily find this a very good feature. I, I just find that like... It's, it's holding your hand in the worst possible way. It's just teaching you to be lazy. So this feature, I'm not too excited. The other ones, I, I think there's a lot of uh, cool things about it. This one, mm -mm, I'm, not, I'm not too uh, fond of this one. It's great company when you just want to take in the view. Make a little room in your heart for Jade. You know what this... Lots. You know what this bot won't do? They'll be available to... This bot, at least it won't kill your cat. So that I could give you. I mean, look at it. It's, it's you know, it's actually rubbing the cat. Look at that. So the, the least you could think of is that this bot won't kill your cat, unlike a certain Aina dev. So there you go. Uh, that in itself probably gives it a big plus. I don't know, I'm assuming uh, to be bounced by accelerated recharges and batteries. Uh, I mean, uh, after Essence Mastery, uh, OW is more of a meme than it was anyway. 
I mean, even with recharges, right? I I'm hoping like they it will punish you in terms of recharge because that way there is a advantage and a disadvantage to it. But if it's all entirely like this, this bot does a lot of things and there's very little disadvantages to having it. If field or, or or using the mastery, then it feels like oh well, it's overpowered. It's breaking too many parts of the game that I don't think should have happened. Until it gets uh, red eyes. Oh yeah, I mean until it goes uh, full red eyes on you. But yeah, you want an easy button cat gang bot waypoint is op. Is it waypointing? Is that what it said? It said like save you time. Did that mean waypointing? I don't know. Mm. Or you mean waypoint is OP as in like if you die, then like people usually don't waypoint. They wait for people to revive them, which I still don't know why that's a thing in, in, in games. But yes, it is a thing where people die and the waypoint is literally like five feet away. Like you're five feet away from the waypoint. Just waypoint. No one's reviving you. They added the cat after the Friday stream. I don't know if it's the same one. This isn't even in the same place. So I think... What happened is uh, they had to bring like the cousin of the other cat, you know, so just to pretend that, you know, all everything's fine, but we will never forget what happened. Don't you think the bot will make you have to decide between boosts? You won't get all the benefits. Either you go to gathering, you're talking, you're talking. I think it will probably make you decide, which is a good thing. Making you decide is a good thing so that it balances out all these issues that we're talking about unlock and customize soon all right uh i think that's that's everything to do with the video um there was that article that you guys talked about right so that's everything with the video Let, let's look at the article if i can find the article Article is not here. Oh, no. Article is here. There we go. Okay. Uh, Hands-on with Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons. Newly unveiled Jade Bots Mastery from Colin Henry. With the launch of Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons less than a month away and the release date finally revealed, ArenaNet has held out one last secret to unveil before launch day, and that is its final mastery track. ArenaNet recently invited us to take a tour of New Kining City and get a sneak peek of End of Dragon's final mastery tra uh, track, Jade Bots. As for New Kining itself, be sure to check out the Guild Chat stream, which happened last week. I don't have a whole lot to say that you can't uh, glean uh, from watching the video. The city is dazzling with bright colors and heavy doses of neon jade tech. It absolutely drips modern Kanta's East Asian fantasy cyberpunk Asiatic. Aesthetic, sorry. Jade punk as Anet is calling it. That's the first time I've heard someone say jade punk, to be honest. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but personally, I think it's beautiful and I can't wait to explore more of it. The real meat of the tour though was the mastery ta track oh wait the real meat of the tour comma though comma was the mastery. i don't know if this was a, one of these commas does not belong there first of all let me let me set your expectations if you're expecting something as game changing as heart of thorns gliders or path of fires mounts go ahead and set the bar a little lower that i said that said sorry i think there's some decent utility to be had there to be honest, it's going to be difficult to up everything that Anet has at this point. The game has almost every game-changing feature. This, unless they produced sailing, game is pretty solid, you know? So very little that you, they can push the bar on at this point. Jade bots are the cute little bug-like robots that Arenet has been teasing for a while now. Move over, R2-D2 and bb There's a new adorable droid companion in my heart. Oh, look at that, R2-D2, they kicked you out. Your Jade bot has three equipment slots of its own. One power core and two modules. Okay. So that's the power core that they talked about recharging. And then two modules, which I'm guessing are what you pick the features for. Better power cores only allow the Jade bot to do more, but increase the player's vitality. More interesting, however, are the modules, which allow your bot to perform a number of unique tasks. 
Examples we were given were speeding up your skiff or increasing your mount's energy. Both power cores and modules can be crafted, though we weren't privy to the de details of how that crafting will work. Okay, so that's actually good. You actually have to make it yourself. Uh, that's perfect. It's not like a mastery that you just unlock. So you still have to unlock those extra features there through, uh, through crafting. There were no cosmetic options shown to us, but let's be honest, we're probably going to see Jade Bot skins popping up in the cash shop uh, before long. Which, hey, you know what? It's fine. Gotta, gotta, feed, uh, gotta, gotta feed the company, you know? Which I'm okay with uh, this being cash shopped. Your Jade Bot will also gain a number of functions based on your progress along the Jade Bot's mastery track. It's important to note that you can't simply, simply spam these abilities willy-nilly. I don't even know anyone who uses this, but okay. Your Jade Bot carries a certain number of charges and must be recharged at Jade batteries scattered throughout the world. Which is good. I'm hoping that there's a cost to this as well. Not just you have to recharge it for free. I'm hoping there's a cost in here. Um, and it's good that you just can't spam the abilities, which is, again, like a very important thing. The first mastery is called the Gliding Booster. As it implies, it allows players to instruct their Jade Bot to lift them up while gliding. Think of it like an updraft. You can trigger anytime, anywhere. I read that like uh, in the wrong order. Anyway, I'm sure boundary breakers will have some fun with this one. Of course, in most cases, this isn't that different from simply hopping onto a griffin mount, but more mobility options are never a bad thing. And it should be a lot more accessible than the time consuming and expensive griffin grind. Yeah, again, like most of this seems like helping new players into the game uh, that don't have the time to go back and play the other, like they'll play the other content, but first they want to maybe enjoy the, the new stuff. It's nice to see older content like gliders continue to see improvements more than six years later. And again, a big plus the fact that, yes, they are improving older technology in the game itself. That's a very big plus. The second mastery called multi-charge increases the number of charges your jade bot can carry to four. Third is Jade Tech Waypoint, which allows you to drop a waypoint anywhere in the open world and return to it. Ooh, like your own personal waypoint. This could be... I feel like this could be a bit of a problem. Some people might learn to abuse this. So, interesting, convenient, sure, but is it going to cause problems? Absolutely, I could see it. Like any other waypoint, which sounds incredibly handy... The fourth mastery is called Energy Efficiency, which increases the number of charges you, your bot can hold and allows it to gather two charges at once from batteries, as well as gain charges while riding ziplines, a new Jade Bot power, Powered Point 2 Point travel system that the devs compared to jumping mushrooms. Okay, that's not too bad, all right? So, like, I mean, there's a, an ability that you could use and then that will enable more charges. Last but certainly not least is Rescue Protocol, which allows you to call your bot to help res you while you are downed. My understanding is that it functions similarly to Ranger's Lick Wounds skill. Yeah, um, okay, so then it does mean it will take time to revive you. Although, again, I don't think this itself, this was a necessary uh, ability. Jade bots also have a variety of bespoke tech things that they can do in certain areas of the world. I mean, a deem, uh, demode one... I don't know how to pronounce this. One such action for us in Kining City. Players can walk up to a terminal and take direct control of their Jade Bot and fly it around the city freely like a drone. Ooh, is this going to be like a first person look? To get some nice views on the city. The devs also briefly mentioned solving puzzles with these free flying Jade Bots, which is exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see some puzzles surrounding this. Um, but interesting uh i'm hoping this gives us like free cam in a way because we desperately need a free cam to get some nice scenery shots this could be exciting so there you have it we now know all the masteries of end of dragons going to launch with probably after all we thought we knew about all of path of fire's masteries before launch until someone unearthed the griffin mount but bearing any surprises that will be it from what i've seen jade bots are super cute functional and intuitive to use nothing they do is going to blow your mind but they add some nice quality of life as I mentioned above, I've seen many players holding out hope that this last mastery will be some kind of final ace in the hole that will surprise everyone and get even the most apathetic fence sitters a reason to get excited about Ender Dragons, something to rival the excellent mount system of Path of Fire. 
But as nice as they are, Jade bots simply aren't that. A lot of play, a lot of people are going to be disappointed. But I would like to say again that it's unsustainable for every expansion to outdo the last one, and that's okay. I, I kind of agree with the sentiment. You know, like at this point, the only thing that you could say is going to be game changing is player housing, which we have guild halls for that, and personal instances that they can maybe just revamp there. And we're talking about like sailing or something, right? I, I don't think there's any more game changing as it gets. And I think Guild Wars 2 has done a great job with what we have in terms of, you know, great features in the game. Um, so I'm okay with this. We're getting a new two-person mount, which that in itself, speaking of features, new two-person mount, fishing, skiffs, and some quality of life perks, in addition to full round of elite specs and a new content with all the storytelling that entails. It may look smaller to the previous expansions, but it's far from nothing. I'm excited to explore Kanta with everyone from Xing Jay to New Kining and everything in between when Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons launches February 28th. That is an interesting article. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, like there'll be powered cores that you can charge. There'll be like a mastery line that can enable you to um, add more, uh, I guess, effective uses for it. I'm okay with this. Again, I want to hope that they balance how many features you can have it do, right? Like, it sounds like you could do two features from what it's given based on the, uh, not the power core, but they said, um, where would it be? Um, over here, the modules. So I'm hoping, like, it, it, the modules are limited, but, I mean, two modules sounds like it could do two things. So, be will be interesting. Fractal console in Guildhall, a bit similar to that, yeah. Uh, why would it cause problems? Uh, are you talking about the uh, the personal waypoint? I, I could definitely see some botting happening with, with the personal waypoint thing. Um, I, that being said, I don't know if it's a temporary waypoint or if you are further from it at a certain distance, maybe it does go away. So like, it's not like a waypoint that you can just continue to go to the end of the map and... and We'll have to see. So far, I think the features are fine. A few of them I would nitpick are just ma mainly the revive one. I' not a fan of the revive one. Um, the skiff one is nice. Uh, the scavenging might be a cool idea, depending on what it is. Again, we've guessed either it's scavenging from dead enemies, like something that you would have not picked up unless, like, you scavenged from the jade bot, or it could be scavenging means something to do with gathering materials. Uh, recycling sounds very exciting as well, but we'll have to see what it is. It could either be recycling junk items, it could be recycling something else. There might be a cost to it. We already know that there's going to be a recharge for this bot, so you can't just always spam all these abilities, which is good. I think that's fine. There needs to be some sort of offset for the features that it provides. Overall, I think it's it's going to be a cool feature. Um, a few things that I'm just worried about, but that's, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get an answer on Friday and actually see how it works. And, you know, overall, that's it. I think um, this is a very good article that kind of explains as well what we're expecting to see. The power core charges and the modules. Um, but yeah, there you guys have it. That is the Jade Tech trailer. We'll watch it this Friday and see all the details live on 